Landing with a forefoot strike when running may improve running economy because it may leverage up more elastic strain energy by potentially enabling more efficient storage of elastic strain energy in the Achilles tendon. This is largely because in forefoot strike running, there are three mechanical outputs that occur prior to and at touchdown, and they are increased knee flexion or knee bend, increased ankle plantar flexion, which means the front of the foot points slightly down towards the ground prior to and at touchdown, and thirdly, the dropping of the heel shortly after the forefoot strikes the ground. Some research, which is linked down below this video in the description box, has hinted that these three mechanical outputs may enable the Achilles tendon to stretch and recoil closer to the mass of the body while under low impact conditions. And all of this may help load more elastic strain energy in the Achilles tendon. This in turn may increase elastic power in the Achilles tendon because landing in this way during running helps close the distance between initial foot strike position and the mass of the body. So there becomes more of a mass on a spring effect. Also, there may be less biomechanical forces acting on the Achilles tendon because there's a shorter exposure to a collisional force of which the Achilles, as well as the muscles in the leg, may not have to use much energy to absorb the impact because reduced braking or reduced collisional force at touchdown when running prevents high compressive loads from being produced and may lessen stress on the Achilles tendon. So this is how forefoot running may provide a good basis for enabling the Achilles tendon to become more effective at storing and releasing elastic strain energy. But what's the economic relevance of this? If landing with a forefoot strike during running may do a better job at maximizing the contribution of elastic strain energy exchange in the Achilles tendon, then it may enable the muscles to perform less mechanical work. Thus, less metabolic energy may be expended to move the body forward, especially at faster running velocities. In contrast, in many cases, heel strike running often involves the opposite movements of the leg and foot upon and at touchdown, which may result in less elastic contributions of the Achilles tendon because it may result in more stressed aspects on the tendon. For example, upon and at touchdown in heel strike running, the foot is dorsiflexed, which means the front of the foot is lifted up. So that initial ground contact can be made squarely on the heel. Also, the knee of the landing foot is often completely unbent or straightened out. The net effect of this particular landing configuration on the spring properties of the Achilles tendon during running is it really may stretch the Achilles tendon too much during a time of a longer and more intensive break rate. Because the farther you land away from your knee and hips and therefore the mass of the body at touchdown when running, the greater the burst of collisional impact, which puts a heavy load on the leg in general, including the Achilles tendon, in this condition, the Achilles tendon is locked out in a stretch, whereby this increased tendon stretch usually accompanies increases in loading on the Achilles tendon. And at the same time, the tendon is locked out during an extended break force period that exceeds several times the body weight. As a result, this may change the way the Achilles tendon responds elastically and contributes energetically in that it may result in lower elastic energy storage capacity which could result in the muscles and the ligaments working harder to try to maintain and increase velocity on account of it's a well-known fact that because of their elasticity, tendons can reduce the mechanical work done by the muscles, which was found to be directly related to reduce the metabolic costs in running. Therefore, for the same reason, the more spring enabled your stride is when running, the more elastic energy gained. And so there may be less muscle cost because there's less mechanical contribution by the muscles, which may be the case in forefoot running as there may be less mechanical energy from the muscles because there may be more elastic energy stored in the Achilles tendon. Therefore, there may be less muscular effort required to accelerate the body forward 
And a high profile example of this is if you watch most top elite distance runners, most use a non-heel strike landing. They tend to always show the same aesthetic traits when they run and that they tend to have a glide-like stride that appears sort of effortless. They don't seem to be grappling too much mechanically with the ground. Their stride doesn't really look all that mechanically labor intensive. Rather, they appear more smooth, lighter on their feet, more responsive or springy. Their feet just kind of float up and nothing really seems to force. And part of that may be attributed to the mechanical outputs engaged by a non-heel strike landing enables more efficient use of the elastic structures of the lower leg so you get a more spring enhanced elastically powered stride hope you've enjoyed this video if you did feel free to hit the thumbs up button as well as the subscribe button if you haven't already where you will stay more informed on heel strike running versus forfeit strike running thank you so much for listening and watching have fun out there on the roads and trails bye for now